Defendant. Tonight we sit down with Deborah Ross. Good to see you. Welcome back to the program. Great to see you, Tim. Tabit, I want to keep calling you Representative Ross. I interview you so many times. Oh, like I that. want to move on up. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome back to the program. Happy to uh, be here. Let's just start with the easy one first. Uh, why did you decide to leap into this? I know you thought about it for some time, but why did you decide to A, get back into public service and B, a race like U.S. Senate? Well, I've had my whole career in public service, so I was in public service when I decided to come back in. But I got back in because I think that North Carolina deserves better leadership in Washington, D.C. Uh, Washington is really not serving our people. It's, it's, real, it's a mess. Um, we, because of redistricting, we don't have even representation among the parties for all people of North Carolina. And as we discussed, I've spent my career in public service. I served more than 10 years in the General Assembly. I've been an attorney for 25 years, mostly doing work for the public. And I thought it was time that the North Carolina people get somebody who puts their interests, their everyday interests, first in Washington, D.C. And that'll be me. You know that the, the, the Republicans are going to peg you uh, because your background the ACLU mm -hmm. is, a, is a liberal. Are, are you going to take that as, as, a, as a, a beacon and, or are you going to try to, to push more toward the middle? How, do you, how are you going to take that? Well, what I would say is that the values that I represent and the values of North Carolina are about fairness, equality, and opportunity. And those are the same things that Terry Sanford stood for when he was in the U.S. Senate, and the same things that even people like Frank Porter Graham stood for. So I'll be representing North Carolina values and every single person in this state when I go to the U.S. Senate. What do you see this race uh, uh, banking on right now? What do, you, what do you think is the big, I mean, obviously the ISIS and the terrorism mm -hmm. is a big part right now, but what, what are you focusing on in this race? Right well, now? people are scared and I understand that and we can talk about that. But really what this race is about is people's everyday lives, economic security and economic opportunity. Ever since the Great Recession, we have, most, of, most people don't feel like they're fully back on their feet. Every generation has some level of economic insecurity. We all want our kids to go to an excellent, an excellent public school, but not all people feel like the public schools are doing their job and are getting the resources that they need. And then when kids graduate, they want to be able to go to a community college or get technical skills or go to a four-year college. But crushing student loan debt is inhibiting a lot of them. Or even if they do go to college, they might graduate and not be able to start a business or buy a house, move out of their parents' house. Um, and that's that's that generation's struggle. For their parents, it's wage stagnation. For their moms, their moms are worrying about equal pay for equal work. They're, everybody's worrying about the cost of health care, whether or not they can have family leave for, um, you know, when people are sick. Those are the kinds of things that that generation's worried about. And then, of course, our seniors are worried about the economic security that com comes with Medicare and Social Security and whether or not those vital programs that they've been promised are going to be cut. And that's really the crux of what people are thinking about every day, and that's going to be the crux of my campaign. Let's assume you win and Richard Burr wins and you face off against Richard Burr in the fall. Uh, and, and ISIS and terrorism is one of the main topics. Mm -hmm. how, how do you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the, is the, the, the chair of the Intelligence Committee in the U.S. Senate right now who's getting classified reports, et cetera, et cetera? How do you plan to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him on that issue? By letting the people in North Carolina know that their safety is the number one issue. I am very, very focused on making sure that people feel secure. We have some of the best military and the best intelligence in the world. We need to use those tools in a strategic, targeted way to take out the bad guys, to take out ISIS or ISIL, whatever way you want to say it. And then we need to work with our international partners to make sure that we're not in it alone and that the world is secure. This is a very important issue, and I want people to know that their security is top of mind for me. Do you think the president's doing everything we should be doing right now to take on this issue? I think the president's doing a lot, but much more can be done. For example? Well, we need to be much smarter about how we look at people who get attracted to terrorism. So we can tell people we can have this two-year vetting process like we do for refugees, and we can look at the visa pro program. But the question is, who's here already? 
who might be attracted to getting involved in terrorism how do we combat that how do we deter people from doing that and how do we keep our people safe the primary beforehand do, do you think that it's a race of its own or do you think that race is about uh, will be about Richard Burr I hope that it'll be about Richard Burr because that's the change that we really need what else do you hope to take on? You mentioned education. What do you, what do you think that the, the, the federal government should be doing more with education? We saw what was just passed right. uh, last week to change uh, No Child Left Behind and ESSA. What, do, what else do you think the federal government should do on education? Well, um, uh, let's look at it as a barbell. So the, the federal government has done some work to get rid of No Child Left Behind and, and come up with a new program. A lot of people are in favor of that. There's some wait and see on some of the aspects, but it's certainly better than what we had before. Um, the federal government can help with pre-K programs. That's a place where our state has been a model. Um, some of the pre-K programs haven't gotten as much funding as they need at, at the state level, but I think that the federal government has historically been supportive and should be more supportive of early childhood programs. That's what gets our kids ready to learn. My mom was a pre-K teacher, so it means a lot to me to make sure that all kids are ready to learn when they get there. And then on the other end, most student loan debt is financed through the federal government. And um, there's a problem when student loan debt is significantly higher than how much, how much it costs to borrow for a car or a new house, and we're not giving kids the opportunity to refinance that student loan debt in the same way that you could refinance um, your house at lower rates. That just puts too much burden on our kids, on our families, and eventually on our economy. Because if, if we have people in their 20s who are paying back student loans, again, they're not buying houses. They're not starting businesses. They're not participating in our economy in the way that we need to to provide the opportunity that we all need. We're out of time, unfortunately, but I have to ask you just on a lighthearted note, do you miss the General Assembly at all? <laughs> um, I miss the people at the General Assembly, and um, I, miss some, I miss some of the things that we really got done. I feel like my legislative career was wonderful. I did a lot of bipartisan work. We made a big difference on domestic violence, on historic preservation, on ethics and campaign finance. So I miss some of those things, but I hope to do them in, in the U.S. Senate. All right. Well, hopefully this is just the one of many. In the meantime, uh, good to see you. Thank you so much, and have a good holidays as we head into a big 2016. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Time for our last break. When we return, reporter Ryan Table joins us to take on the issues they will be writing about this week. Stay with us.